Hello again to all of you. I hope you are fine. Now there is very little time left until the start of the Formula 1 2023 season. If you have just started Formula 1, I can take you to the video you see on the screen. If you've watched it and have any further questions, stay tuned to this video. Because in this video, we will talk about the questions that everyone is afraid to ask. You can switch to the question you want from the bar section of the video. So, let's get started. 1. Do F1 cars have traction control and ABS? F1 cars are piloted by the world's fastest and most talented drivers, earning millions of dollars a year. They've got to earn their paycheck somehow. F1 cars do not have traction control or an anti-lock braking system, ABS, making them more of a challenge to drive. Occasionally, you might see drivers plow straight into a corner amidst a puff of smoke with their car seemingly refusing to turn into the corner. This is called a lockup and is a direct result of not having ABS. If a driver applies too much pressure on the brakes too quickly, they will momentarily lock and drag the tires along the track surface, leaving a flat spot of worn rubber which then causes uncomfortable vibrations for the driver. If a driver seems to lose control at the exit of a low-speed corner and spin the rear tires, it's because they're in full control of the car's traction or sometimes the lack thereof. Drivers are just as cautious on the gas pedal as they are on the brakes, which they nurse to their correct operating temperature and use to their maximum efficiency. Well, okay, Max. Yeah, all good. 2. Why do F1 drivers live in Monaco? I was very surprised when I saw this question for the first time. Frankly, I didn't know much about where the pilots live. But I also realized that most of them actually live in Monaco. The reason was not what I expected. It seems like every F1 driver lands in glamorous Monte Carlo after breaking ground. Why is Monaco so attractive to F1 drivers? Monaco's charms are easier to understand when you do a little research. If you spend at least six months of the year in Monaco, you are considered a resident, and do not have to pay capital gains tax or wealth tax. No wonder the city is a real playground for the wealthiest people on the planet. The streets are teeming with luxury cars, rows of designer shops, and the waters are filled with multi-million dollar yachts. It's the perfect place for a top-notch athlete to fit in. While it may seem like every driver lives in Monaco, only a handful actually live there. Although Lewis Hamilton owns many properties around the world, he spends most of his time in Monaco with Max Verstappen and Daniel Ricciardo. And let's not forget Ferrari driver Charles Leclerc, who was born in Monaco and remains a citizen. 3. Can a Formula 1 car go reverse on the ceiling of a tunnel? A modern Formula 1 car can generate up to 3.5 times its own weight in downforce. To estimate its magnitude, think of it this way. If you weigh 80 kilos, imagine lifting 280 kilos while traveling at 150 kilometers per hour. In this way, theoretically, a Formula 1 vehicle traveling at 150 kilometers per hour and above can drive on the side walls or ceiling of a tunnel. Although the vehicle generates the strength to hold on to the wall, there are several problems that must be overcome in order to achieve this. 1. The operation of the engine. Since the vehicle will stand upside down or sideways, the engine will run out of fuel and stop with the existing fuel cells. In order to overcome this, a fuel pump design is required that can absorb even when the fuel cell is upside down or on its side. Likewise, changes may be required in the oil supply units of the engine. The oil tanks of Formula 1 vehicles are designed to absorb the displaced oil due to the side force they receive in the corners. Minor changes will be sufficient to ensure that the vehicle can be sucked when the vehicle is reversed. 2. It is a concern whether the driver can handle reverse driving. It has been observed that the drivers are adversely affected on the tracks where sudden and sharp elevation changes are experienced. In summary, if you make minor changes in fuel and oil cells, get a Formula 1 vehicle and find a fighter pilot to drive it, it is possible to drive a Formula 1 vehicle on the sidewalls and ceiling of a tunnel. 4. Can drivers listen to music during a race? Honestly, I was wondering this question too. I would love to listen to my own playlist while cornering at 200 per hour. You can specify which songs you would like to listen to in the comments. The answer to the question is as follows. The short answer is no, drivers cannot listen to music during the race. While it's true that navigating Spotify during the race would be a nice gimmick, it would no doubt be a huge distraction for drivers. 5. What is DRS? DRS, Drag Reduction System aims to reduce the pressure force on the ground by opening the part on the rear wing of the vehicle. Formula 1 regulation has always given importance to competition in races. More competition means more fun racing. This works to attract more viewers. Accordingly, each year the regulation has found different ways to increase competition. Since 2011, DRS has been in Formula 1. Simply put, DRS takes air resistance away and increases the speed of an F1 car. All F1 cars have rear wings that open and close when activated or deactivated 
activated by a button on the steering wheel. The small part of the wing that opens limits the amount of drag affecting the car and creates an opening for more air to pass through thereby increasing the speed of the car in pursuit. The rules of DRS use are just as simple as the system itself. Drivers may only activate it in designated DRS zones, typically found on long straights, and when they are within one second of the car ahead. DRS zones are clearly marked for drivers by white lines and signs at the edge of the track, with the end point being whenever the driver puts the brakes on. When the brake pedal is applied, DRS automatically shuts off and the rear wing closes. 6. How much gas does an F1 car consume? Two much. If a standard car consumes something like 6 liters per 100 kilometers, F1 sees 45 liters at the same distance. Considering that an average F1 race is 305 kilometers, the amount of gasoline consumed depends on your math. 7. How many seconds do Formula 1 cars go from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour? F1 cars accelerate from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in about 2.6 seconds. This may seem slow considering their top speeds, but F1 cars have impressive speeds of 0 to 200, not 0 to 100. That is, the acceleration of 100 to 200 is 1.9 seconds on average. That's it for our video. My friends, I hope you learned something from the video. You had fun. If you like the video, you can like and subscribe. I know there are a lot of things I haven't mentioned yet. I will make a video of them too. If you have any questions you want to know, you can ask me in the comments. I will answer or make a video for sure. Until the other videos, take care. Stay with us in F1.